Hello everyone, and welcome to this release log for HardOps987 underscore 19. I'll be your host MX2, and today we'll be going over what has changed in this particular update. Array now has support for multiple objects on a better level than it did before, improving its usage substantially. View dice has also been improved quite a bit with control now being in control of snapping to behave more like Blender. The Modifier of curve has now been added to our modifier list, allowing users to add a curve and to form an object at the exact same time, making things a lot more streamlined. The big highlight of this release will probably be the stack unstack geometry node system that's been added to this version. While highly experimental, it's definitely something that's been a labor of love and I'm excited to announce its release as part of this version. We originally was going to move this up to be 988 and make a whole event out of it, but I was talked out of it. Modifier scroll also has the ability to reveal objects that are related to geometry nodes. So once you stack your booleans into geometry nodes, you'll be able to at least unstack them. Mirror now has functionality of doing flip and radial array has the ability to share the same empty if used on repetitive operations. Two floor now also has bull shape support. And just like in the box cutter release log where we were talking about sort having override flags, hard ops also has the exact same system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. If we take this cube and we just scale it down, Shift D, Duplicate it, Alt S to reset the scale, and we scale this up on the Z, we grab this one, Shift D, Duplicate it, grab this one, Shift D, Duplicate it, bring it over, S, Shift, and Z. We're just basically duplicating this shape and creating a conglomerate of shapes just to comprise this you know concept but what we want to do is array it and make multiple versions of it so if I were to press Q and we go under add modifier and we choose array we see that when we jump over to 3d it just breaks down and even in 3d it still breaks down so if I press V we see that it almost works and it looks good for just a moment in fact it looks like it's almost capable of working so there is a chance that it could have actually worked out. However, this is just not accurate enough and we see that it's getting less accurate as this continues going. So improvements have been made in that regard. So we'll select this cube, press X and delete it, control V in order to paste in our example. And I'm just going to shift click this in order to have an active selection. And if we were to press Q, go under add modifier and choose array V2 we see that now whenever we array, all the objects are synced up. And there's also an additional hotkey where you can press Shift S in order to get the same way that array was before, or you can actually press Shift S and everything will be synced up to actually match. So just like that, that issue has now been resolved. Just showing another improvement with array V2. So first things first is if you press Q and you go under mesh tools, there's an option for dice. And recently we've been working on something called Dice 2D, where basically the dice will rescale itself in order to fit the mesh that's on screen or the selection. One of the improvements with this update is if you press tab to expand the dot UI, you see that an option for dissolve has now been added. In addition to dissolve being added, we also added the ability for sharps to be able to be preservative of the surface whenever using dissolve dice. To show this in action, I'm just going to select these three faces and we're just going to alt lock our view. And I'm just going to go into dice and edit mode, press V, and we'll press D in order to dissolve the original geometry. This means whenever we click it, the original geometry has been eradicated, which can give a really cool result, but isn't really optimal when it comes to these differential surface type situations. So let us select these three edges and we will just mark them. And from here, let's set up the same scenario again. So we just go under our dice, press V, we could press tab, click on dissolve, and just by rolling up our number, we can just click and apply and we see that it was capable of replacing the surface without replacing the area that was marked with sharp marking. So that is really the purpose of this update was just to prevent that from happening because alternatively, it was just wiping it out. And there are certainly cases where you would definitely want an override in place in order to get those sort of things under control. So. Here we have it without sharp markings, and then when we dissolve and replace it, it just does a geometric replacement of everything that was once there before. Line dice has also seen some enhancements. So if we press Q, 
we can go under mesh tools and bring up dice. And by pressing V twice, we can switch over to line dice. When we first released it, a user immediately pointed out that control should actually be snap, meaning that you could hold control and alt in order to snap between two points and click and do it again. And it just feels a lot more natural, a lot more blender-like. We can also press W to turn it on wireframe if needed. So here I'm using control to snap to this point. I'll hold alt, jump here, release alt, click, and just like that, we can now use angular snap inside of line dice a lot more fluidly than we could before with it being on shift. My apologies for that oversight. We should have spotted that. Previously, we also added the ability for view dice to be able to rotate. And one of the things that was a small oversight was the ability to press tab to bring up the dot UI, but also to stop the rotation because there may be a case where you may be just rotating. You're like, you know what? Now I want to actually pause it, bring up the dot UI, and begin making fine adjustments. And so some things have been done to definitely make that feel a little more fluid as well. Using this mesh as an example, we'll just click on it, press Q, go under Add Modifier, and choose Curve. Currently, we see that our curve is going on the Z axis. So if we press F9, we can actually control roll over to change this to a different axis, in which case we're using X. We also see that there's some additional options on the F9 that can be used for adjusting this, but for the most part, we are done. Let's tab in edit mode, and now we can easily curve to form this mesh without any further issue. And that is add curve new to hard ops. Here we have this mesh that has a series of modifiers. We see that there's a bevel at the beginning and then there's about 32 Boolean modifiers and then there's a mirror and a weighted normal. And while this looks cool as a stack to be looking at in your hops helper, it is a little dense. So we've added an option that basically allows you to stack Boolean modifiers into a geometry node modifier, allowing you to consolidate your stack in an easy and concise manner. There are some rules to it, of course. For example, whenever you are using exact modifiers. There's an option to use the exact modifiers in the geometry nodes. However, geometry nodes don't actually have an option for them. We see now that this op operation has completed that we have bevel, 33 booleans in the form of a geometry node modifier, hop smear, and weighted normal. The first thing I wanna go over is that if you press Q and you try to go under modifier scroll and go under boolean scroll, that is just not going to happen. There are no booleans to recall because this is a geometry node modifier. We press shift tab, and we scroll back through our modifiers just to enable everything. And we also see that geometry nodes is significantly more heavy on the system. So using them as a medium for consolidation in the middle of working is probably not the greatest idea. I cannot stress how experimental of a concept this is. In fact, I'm beginning to find some irregularities with geometry nodes themselves that makes this a very unique concept. So one of the things I do want to cover is that when it comes to revealing your objects, if you shift click, you are able to reveal your booleans that were contributed in the making of this geometry node. So it will search through a geometry node stack in order to bring it back. And the reason I use this particular example is because it was so strangling on the computer. I want to showcase that this can truly bring your computer to a standstill. I tried compressing a hundred booleans and it was just not having it. I walked away from the computer, came back, it did happen. But just letting you know that if it doesn't work well on your computer, it is something that is probably one of the growing pains of geometry nodes, which is why it's a little premature for us to be introducing such things. But it was a task on the board that I wanted done for reasons. And I'm happy to see that it is able to exist in this world. So without further ado, stack, in the form of geometry nodes. So let's right click and cancel out of this scroll, which as we see is taking a moment. Just geometry nodes is just one of those things right now that's just new and experimental. And I'm sure that there's many optimizations to be had, but probably the biggest question that you have with stack is can you unstack? Well, yes, you can. If we hover over it, we see that clicking it is a stack mode. All clicking is an unstack mode and basically shift is a modifier, which will basically stack all booleans or unstack all booleans. So depending on if you have exacts in your stack, it will perform a break where basically it will stack all the fast modifiers up to the first exact, 
and then you can stack the next ones after that one up to the next exact and so on allowing you to preserve the functionality of exact without breaking it through geometry nodes but i'm going a little too in depth with this let's alt click and we have now unstacked all of these modifiers allowing us to go back to work in a traditional manner where basically we can you know go through boolean scroll modifier scroll we can press tab to go into the expanded UI, go over to Boolean scroll and roll through it, which is something you cannot do when you convert it into a geometry node stack. This is important to keep in mind, but just letting you know that at any time you can now go in your add modifiers and just choose to stack and unstack. And depending on your computer and the particular modifiers you have in place and what it's having to go through, it's either gonna take a quick second or you'll find yourself going through a brief hold like you're seeing me go through. but. Afterwards, we're just going to jump over to the geometry node stack and we have to select a geometry node, but this is the modifier stack that was just created. So obviously creating a stack of this magnitude is going to take some time, but its uses will definitely become a thing in the future as I begin showing its use with ads and the reason that I even wanted to be able to deal with bullions in the geometry node stack, but I'm pretty sure people who are actually a little bit more capable with geometry nodes to myself are already thinking of all the applications that this opens up to them. But with that, I will just cut this short and move on to the next section. For this example, we'll just take our cube and we're just going to bevel this one side. And since I have box cutter open, I'm just going to draw a make box here. And we're just gonna select this object, select our main shape. And if we press Alt X, we bring up the hard ops mirror tool by pressing D, you'll notice that there's now a new option for flip. And so by selecting flip, we see that under our mirror settings that we don't have the active included in the multi mirror slash flip, which means that whenever I click on mirroring this, it's actually going to flip this to the other side of this object. So if I select the object again and we press Alt X, you can alternatively include the active, which means that whenever I click to flip it, it will actually flip both objects. But just letting you know that now inside of mirror, you can flip objects, which is nothing major, but definitely comes in handy for times where you need it. And most of the time I actually work with include active unchecked because I prefer to use my secondary object as a recipient of the origin data of the primary object. So just letting users know that the functionality exists both ways, but now you can mirror inside of flip or flip inside of mirror. I had that flipped. So in box cutter, there's this exercise called work the corner where basically you enable snap and under dots, you enable static dots, which is an alternative dot system. So by holding control, you can actually roll the wheel to get alternative orientations, which we'll get this one, bring out a box and just cut in this corner. And then before proceeding, we'll press Q, go under set origin, and we're just gonna set our origin based off of this corner we just cut in. And the best part about this is that we can now cut into the shape with a box press Alt X and mirror it across itself based off of the corner. And with our selection still present, we can just shift click radial array to radial around this corner. So now we actually have the beginnings of the workflow I call work the corner. So by selecting the object, we can now draw another box. We're just going to mirror it across itself again, just to keep things congruent when it comes to the center area of this main corner. And the thing that I want to demonstrate is that normally what I would do is select both objects and then shift click radial array, which would reuse the same settings as before, but we also see that it created a new empty. So let's right click and get rid of that. What we actually now can do is select the object, select the empty, press Q and use radial array and it will basically share the same empty as before. So if you watched the previous work to corners, you will probably have a pretty good idea about how beneficial this can be to just continuously be able to grab the same empty and just keep working it over and over without having to create empties over and over and by the end just be managing hundreds of empties. You know, I don't know how bad it is for the environment, but I definitely want to try to be as efficient as possible with our tools. So the prospect of creating a million empties is just not something that I want to be involved with. But this is basically what the purpose of this particular improvement is, is to improve users who wish to work the corner and use a constant form of radial array and not have to create an empty every time they wanna create a radial array, especially if it's using the exact same parameters as the last 500 
empties that you just placed down. So we're just selecting it, Q, radial array, and we can also press A to turn off the ability to adjust the displacement where we can click and complete the operation. And just like that, we now have all of these objects on the exact same empty whenever it comes to radial array. So for this example, we are just going to control C, copy the last example to the clipboard. And from here, open up Blender 2.83. So this version is using hardops987 underscore 16, which is the version where we added to floor. And under settings, just control clicking manage will evict cutters out of the scene and place them in the cutters collection, which I just love. So often I need to evict things that come over as a byproduct of the ability to control C. So to show this example, I'm just going to bring this cube up like so. And let us also control A and maybe let's undo placing our location. But basically if we select this face and we were to choose to floor, the operation is now complete. However, when we tap out of edit mode, we see that all of our booleans are placed somewhere not where we wanted them. So let's enable them and look at where they are. And they're actually all underneath this mesh. So kind of weird. I bet we can move it down a little bit. And just like that, we have replicated our work to corner in a flat linear area. So that's kind of interesting, but really not the desired result. So as a result, there's been some improvements made with it. Not saying that you should take your cubes upwards and rotate them off to the side like this because this is silly in itself. But if you do and you select a face and you choose to floor and then we tab out, we see that it was able to place the object to the floor and all the booleans came in exactly as they're supposed to be. So that's the purpose of that particular improvement. Proud to see it as a thing now. It was just a minor annoyance that probably affected only me, but definitely noticed it.